Today's video is actually from a request from you guys based off the old Half-Life 2 versus no graphics card mini series that we used to do on the channel where you guys actually asked if I could test that game and test its limits against a more modern APU. We know the game will actually play but how far can we actually push it and of course I like you guys so much that I'm going to answer that request and I also love the game too so it's a mini bonus for me. It comes to no surprise to anybody that actually watches the channel here that Half-Life 2 was one of my most favourite games of all time. I still actually replay it now and again. Pretty much every year I will replay that game, whether it's in VR or whether it's in a super high kind of resolution, just to get a much better experience out of it. I'm always there to replay it. And of course, you guys seem to love it too, because all the time I keep getting requests to feature that game inside videos, particularly when it comes to older hardware. But now and again, I do get a request just like today where you guys want me to test it against something a little bit more modern. But of course, if that was a full system with a graphics card, it wouldn't be any challenge at all. The game is now around 20 years old. And even though it does stand up quite well in terms of graphic fidelity, it was never the most demanding game out there, so it will always run beautifully smooth. But how well does it run when we come to modern APUs? That's what you wanted to ask me. And of course, we're going to be answering that today. The APU for this has, of course, got to be the latest AMD Ryzen 8000 series. And the one that we've got here is the 8600G. This is a 6 core 12 thread APU with built in Radeon 760M graphics. That is very similar to the Radeon laptops that they've got out there. And we know that they can play games. We have tested this CPU before. But how far can we actually push a game like Half-Life 2? Well, of course, we're going to find that out. We are going to be running this APU in a very basic motherboard. This is our MSI Pro A620ME. It is extremely basic, but it's got all of the features that we need. And it can actually allow this CPU to get to its full potential because it doesn't really take a lot for an APU. You can generally run these in little tiny mini systems as long as you've got a reasonably OK power supply and you've got enough RAM and everything to feed it. So that board will give us everything that we need. And that is the one that we're going to be using to give this APU the best chance and to allow it to get to its full potential. The rest of the components are going to be probably reasonably high end compared to what we would normally use here on the channel for the RAM. Of course, we've got to go with DDR5 because this is an AM5 APU after all, which will comprise of this 32 gigabytes of Corsair vengeance ram it is only 5600 megahertz but that's going to be perfectly fine for this apu 32 gigabytes is going to be plenty for it to actually utilize whatever it wants and it's also going to be running in dual channel so we're going to get some pretty decent speeds from this when it comes to storage we don't want that to be any kind of limiting factor here so we've gone for an nvme drive there's no hard drives here in this system and for that we need to thank integral for sending this one across this is integral's latest edge ssd that actually is a Gen 5, even though we're not really going to be able to get to those types of speeds on this. It is an extremely fast NVMe drive. It comes with its own heatsink and a really, really cool little holder to hold it with. I'm not really sure what you're going to be using that for unless you're going to be moving it device to device. But to be honest, I think once you've actually installed it, you're probably never going to touch it again. These are super fast when it comes to read and write speeds. We are talking here of a read speed of around 11,000 megabytes per second and a write speed of 8,500 megabytes per second. But that is only when it is running in PCI Gen 5. This CPU only supports PCI Gen 4 and so does the motherboard. But installing a drive like this will allow for the CPU and the motherboard to get to the maximum that it can support. When it comes to building a little APU system, there's actually not that much that go into them. We've only got four parts here. The CPU actually comes with its own cooler as well. So I suppose you could class that as the fifth part. But because it's actually bundled in, this is technically all you really need to build. You will need a power supply, but you can get them from anywhere nowadays. And of course, a case. For our instance, we would need a micro ATX case, but we're not going to be doing that. We're just going to be throwing it on our open uh, test bench and we're going to be giving the game a little bit of a go. So what I need to do now is actually just knock this system together and then we'll get the game running.
Okay, so we've got the system up and running and I actually love building things like this because it is extremely easy to do. When you're talking about just having a single APU with the iGPU built inside of it, you have no extra cables or anything. With a board like this using an NVMe and low profile RAM, there's extra cables that you don't need. There's lots of cleanliness that you can actually get into a system. And to be honest, even though this is sitting on a budget board, it looks pretty premium, all of these components together. The cooler that we are using on this is my AMD Wraith Max. I didn't want to get the one out of the box, so I use this one. It's going to provide a little bit of a cooler experience than the standard stock one that come with them, but it shouldn't actually affect performance at all. And it looks quite nice because it's got some RGB lighting. The little uh, Ryzen 5 8600G should be able to cope with this game, Half-Life 2, of course, in 1080p, perfectly fine. But we'll start there and we'll start to move up the settings and we'll get it to see how far we can actually take it before we lose a bit of performance our goal is always to try and hit 60 fps so hopefully we can still hit that in the highest settings with the highest resolutions but i'm sure we'll see that as we go along i just want to thank integral again for sending across this nvme drive they actually wanted to support some of our videos and this is the one that they sent across it is a little bit more premium than we are used to on the channel but it gives us an opportunity to do this kind of stuff because it means that we can completely max out our platform and to be honest the speeds on this are incredible even not running in gen 5 running in gen 4 with this system we managed to see some fantastic results from it which really did clearly show us that we are maxing out the platform completely so definitely go check them out i'll leave some links in the description below to this and some of their other models so if you want to support us you can help us by supporting them too but of course we need to get into game the system is running perfectly fine like i say the nvme drive is running super fast the ram just using a standard xmp profile is actually running to its full capacity so we shouldn't have any more delays we can just get straight into the game now like i say half-life 2 is 20 years old now and it shouldn't have any problem running in 1080p even with the highest of settings but we are going to test there first one of the things you will notice when you actually come to test this game if you are a benchmarker out there is you will hit an fps cap of around 250 to 300 fps and that is because it is built into the game to remove that all you need to do is go to the console by hitting till typing in fps underscore max it is currently set to 300 and we're going to set it to 10,000, submit that. That should allow us to go beyond the 300 FPS. But we are currently locked in the corner here by 60 FPS. That is probably because we've got VSync or something enabled, and it's probably going to the maximum of our capture device here. So we will need to head into the options to be able to change that. We'll go to options, we'll go to video, we'll double check what we are actually configured in. We are currently configured in a 1080p resolution. That's perfectly fine. We'll go to advanced everything is at high apart from anti-analyzing which we will we'll turn that up to eight times msaa we're going to just max this out at the moment and of course we need to turn off v-sync there now we've started the game here in one of the most open areas this is the water canal section of half-life 2 for anybody that hasn't played it as you can see graphically the game is standing up quite well it is super smooth here we're currently getting an average of 195 frames per second with a one percent low of 160 that is absolutely fantastic although we are not maxing out our igp at the moment it's currently sitting around at 97 percent utilization temperatures are looking perfectly fine and of course the cpu is completely bored it's not really doing anything at around eight percent utilization we're just going to park up here and we'll jump out we'll see what happens once we start smashing some things up i'm not really quite sure if you really want to see any more of 1080p of course this system will actually play it perfectly fine so maybe we'll just need to up the stakes here a little bit and we'll go up to something like 1440p head over to the settings and we'll change that resolution we'll go to video options we'll switch it up we'll just go staggering up to 1440p first and we'll see what kind of results we get saving those settings and heading back into game we can see that our fps has been slightly affected we're now currently getting an average of 109 110 frames per second with a one percent low of 102 of course that still means that the game is completely playable there's absolutely no issues with this you can play this all day long at these settings we have got a little bit of a dip now that we're starting to shoot things the continuous frames per second has gone down to around 93 but it's gone back up again now it just depends what you're seeing on the screen and of course as long as we can get 60 fps particularly on those one percent lows we're going to have a pretty smooth experience 1% lows are currently looking now at 76 frames per second. So that's not too bad. We're still above 60. We'll just crawl around here a little bit. Maybe once we get into the open space again, things will get a little bit different. So the head crab just jumped on me somewhere. I'm going to dive down. Let's get out of here. Let's get back into our boat. Not really quite sure there's anything up there anyway for us, but we'll have a little bit of a drive around. 
FPS has gone back up again now that we're in the out in the open. We're getting around 100 frames per second on average with a 1% low of 76. So everything is still looking fine. The game is looking great. It looks spectacular in the settings. Like I say, it really does hold up well. Valve do fantastic jobs at games and this is absolutely no different at all. There's a guy up there now who wants to throw me something. I'm sure that will help me out. So let's just back up a little bit. Oh, it did smash and we got some health. So I suppose the real test now is let's try and bump this game up again to 4K. We'll go back to the options. We'll go to video settings. We'll go to the resolution here and we're going to jump it all the way up to 4K and we'll see how well it performs. Jumping back into the game now in 4K, we can see that we've had a huge dip on our performance now. It is four times 1080p, so of course you're going to get that kind of thing. We're now currently getting an average of 56 frames per second with a 1% low of 47. Now, I generally do play this game in 4K on my home system, and that's because, of course, I use a graphics card. Pretty much any graphics card, anything like a 1080 Ti, is perfectly going to run this game in 4K with a very high refresh rate. You can even get away with using some even older cards. I'm pretty sure a 700 series graphics card from Nvidia or even like an old R9 380 will play this game perfectly fine, even at 4K. But we are currently getting an average now of 60 FPS with a 1% low of 47. We're getting a little bit of flickering here on the screen. Oh, it's these things taking pictures of us. So we'll kill these. We don't want them destroying our FPS. Everything's white now. It's blinded me a little bit. We'll turn on our torch. Torch is working perfectly fine. Right, we're going the wrong way. Let's go back up the tunnel and then we'll head all the way around. I think we get jump into the water next. We need some barrels though. I do remember this game like the back of my thumb, to be honest. I played it so many times before, but sometimes you do get a little bit confused on what's happening because I get confused at where I am in the actual game. Throw them down there. They're going to actually help us lift this little ramp up. But like I say, we're not getting a full true 60 FPS experience here, particularly on those 1% lows. So we're going to tweak something. Let's see if we can actually get a nice, solid 60 FPS all round. I think I do know what's actually going to be causing our issues. We'll head back into the video settings. Everything is really super tiny now because we're in 4K and it's pretty much this anti analyzing here. What we'll do is we'll drop it down to a four times. It will affect the picture slightly, but probably not enough in 4K for you to even notice any difference. So we'll go back into the game now and we'll see what kind of FPS we get. So clearly that was actually the issue there. Using a two or higher setting on the anti-analyzing was causing us a bit of an issue when we were in 4K. We're now getting an average of 93 frames per second with a 1% low of 73. That's absolutely phenomenal for a little system that even doesn't have a graphics card or a dedicated graphics card. We're playing Half-Life 2, again, an old game. It should be able to do it, and we're proven that it does. So for any of you out there that were wondering, could you play Half-Life 2 in its max settings in 4K with an APU or at least a modern APU? I don't think you'll get this kind of performance with even the uh, Ryzen 5000 series APUs. I've tested them in the past and they don't quite, quite kind of compete as much as the later versions, the 8000s, but then again, it is the difference between using Vega and Radeon graphics. So we'll see if we can get over here. I'm not sure what the boost button is, but yeah, we've jumped over now. Even though we're over the top of that now and things are getting a little bit more detailed, the world is getting a little bit more closed in. We are still getting an average of 92 frames per second with a 1% low of 67. You can pretty much say if you were to lock the V-Sync now, you could get a pretty smooth 60 FPS experience throughout in this game. So I'm pretty impressed with that. I'm pretty pleased with that. It does mean that if you were to build a little mini system just like this, using just an APU, you're going to get a great experience in games like this. Of course, Half-Life 1 will work perfectly fine. It doesn't even have the demand that Half-Life 2 has, so you're going to get a perfectly fine game from that. Even if you were to play something like Black Mesa, which is a little bit more demanding than Half-Life 2, but it is a remake of Half-Life 1, it will still play them perfectly fine. You might not be able to get to 4K on that one. I'm not quite sure. Maybe we'll test that in a future video. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to do that. I know that you guys love this series of games. It is one of my favorites of all time. So I'm never going to say no to actually testing this game. I love playing it. I love seeing what hardware can do on it. And I want to thank you guys for sending in that recommendation. But for those of you that did ask, yes, you can play Half-Life 2 in max settings near enough in 4k and you will get a more than 60 fps experience it's a fantastic game if you haven't played it definitely go out and try it don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content and as sure as always i'll catch you guys in the next one